Cancer is a very stressful disease and, and a poor di diagnosis um, it's going to increase levels of stress regardless of what the baseline levels of stress for the patient was. Uh, we found that chronic levels of stress um, can dampen the immune response to cancer and therefore um, the effectiveness of certain immunotherapies um, will, will decrease as a result. When we induce stress pathways in, in mouse models of lymphoma, um, lymphoma progress much faster if, um, if these pathways weren't triggered. And we've also gone on to show that these pathways when they're induced, the efficacy of several immunotherapies are quite dramatically reduced as well. Stress or stress-induced pathways, um, if persistent or at, at a chronic level, leads to suppression of immune response, particularly a T cell response. Um, as T cells are very important in control of surveillance of, of tumours and also a major target of immunotherapy. So the bottom line for patients would be that in theory, the lower the levels of stress in a patient or the lower the levels of these stress pathways, the more likely they're going to be to respond to a lot of their therapies. So any strategies that can be used to either reduce their stress or block the effects of the stress could be highly beneficial for many patients. I guess what this evidence in the MOI suggests is that if we can, if we can manage stress or, or um, have lifestyle interventions which, which can manage stress, particularly uh, for cancer patients through their journey, that it'll, it'll help not only with how they're feeling, but also in their ability to respond to these, these type of therapies. The more awareness we have of all the different factors that could influence whether or not these immunotherapies are going to work properly, the better chance we have in the future of designing them effectively and efficiently to make sure they're going to be working properly in humans.